Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Bob Hope, Constance Bennett, and Ralph Bellamy in The Awful Truth. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. In the spring, a young man's fancy lightly turns to thoughts of love. And although it's still winter on your calendar and mine, it's spring in the heart of Bob Hope tonight. He's here with Constance Bennett and Ralph Bellamy to bring us the awful truth. A gay comedy that gives Bob plenty of scope as a Romeo. You'll remember the awful truth as a Columbia picture hit. And we've adapted it especially for these three stars. I won't tell you how many dozen scripts and thousands of feet of film were left along the wayside before we picked this play. But it was worth all the trouble when the irrepressible Mr. Hope began rehearsing his romantic role with Miss Bennett for inspiration and Mr. Bellamy for opposition. It's a brand new chapter in the Hope Saga. In fact, I think we're making history. Bob's success story is amazing even for Hollywood. But there's another success story that concerns the Lux Radio Theater, too. It happened in Hollywood, and it's happened in just about every other city, town, village, or crossroads between here and wherever your loudspeaker is. And it's happening still in every day. That's the success story of Lux Toilet Soap. And the stars of this particular success are listening to the Lux Radio Theater right now. I say stars because it's not a single person. It's every one of you who uses Lux Toilet Soap. And that must be almost as many stars as are visible on a clear California night. Now we give you the story of Jerry and Lucy Warner and their stormy voyage along the course of true love, one of the happiest hurricanes that we've ever sailed with. You see, it takes more than a singing teacher... A dog named Mr. Smith and an oil millionaire to stop Bob Hope. The house lights are down, the curtain goes up, and here's the first act of The Awful Truth, starring Bob Hope as Jerry Warner, Constance Bennett as Lucy, and Ralph Bellamy as Dan. <laughs> The sun lamp room of a Manhattan athletic club. Hank, the attendant, is busy piling towels on the shelf as a young man in gym trunks makes a hurried entrance. The young man is Jerry Warner. Jerry is tall and usually has a healthy look about him. But just now, his skin is the color of old parchment. And there are two beautiful dark circles beneath his eyes. And they are not from overwork. With a sigh and a groan, he stretches out on the table. Oh... Well, good morning, Mr. Warner. Mm. How are you this morning? Swell, swell, and I do mean my head. How do I look? Well, you look a little, uh, well... Never mind. Just make me look good. Come on, unpack those bags under my eyes, turn on the sun lamp, and give it all she's got. Well, about 15 minutes on each side is all I'd recommend, Mr. Warner. 15 minutes, nothing. I've got to get a deep floor to tan if it takes all afternoon. Give it the juice. Well, okay. Had a boy all aboard from Miami, Palm Beach, and Point South. And Hank, don't forget to turn me over when I'm done. Hiya, Jerry. Hiya, Frank. I heard you were in here. Thought maybe you'd like to play a little squash. Squash. That's all I need is a little squash. I haven't even got the strength to squish. <laughs> hey, you're awfully white-skinned for a guy who just spent two weeks in Florida. How come you didn't get tanned any place? Large smoke glasses. Oh. What do you do down there? Carry a parasol? Or didn't you go? Uh, 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 careful. Don't let an idea like that get around. Oh, I get it. Pulling a fast one on the little wife, huh? Look, Frank, I'm surprised at you. I'm supposed to have been in Florida. Now, suppose one of Lucy's friends say, why isn't he tanned? Lucy's going to be embarrassed. Well, I'm going to be tanned, and Lucy's not going to be embarrassed. And what my wife does, doesn't know won't hurt her. Or me either. Uh -huh. What was it, a poker trip? Sure, a fellow's got to bust out once in a while, assert his independence. Boy, did I assert it. <laughs> you certainly look it. But I'll bet you wouldn't like Lucy to pull a stunt like that on you. Why not? A person doesn't have to stop being an individual just because he gets married. Uh, maybe. Anyhow, how about coming over to my house for breakfast? We were all out late last night, and some of the gang are stopping by. I've got a much better idea. Everybody come to my place. Lucy will fix up a swell breakfast for us, and maybe after we can leave the women flat and play some golf. What do you say? I'm convinced. See you later. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, ladies and gents, come on in. The joint is yours. Jerry, that sunburn. Well, you're positively vermilion. Wait till Lucy sees what Florida did for you. Hey, where is she? Lucy, it's your brown as a berry Jerry. You who Lucy, surprise. You who Lucy. Why, Lucy, how you've changed. Hello, old dog of mine. How you been? Where's Mama? Where is she? Welcome back, Mr. Warner. Well, hello, Celeste. Will you tell Mrs. Warner I'm here? I'm sorry, sir. Mrs. Warner is not at home. She's not at home? Wait a minute, folks. Quiet. Say, where'd she go? Well, I, I don't know, sir. She said she was going to a music recital. Well, when did she leave? I, I'm not sure, sir. I, I think last night. Last night? No one could take that many encores. <laughs> you mean she hasn't been home since... Okay, never mind. Uh, what's the matter, Jerry? No welcoming arms to greet you this trip? Oh, mind your own business, will you? Come to think of it, she probably ran up to her Aunt Patsy's cabin in the mountains. She usually does if she gets lonely. She's got beaver blood in her. Suppose her Aunt Patsy wasn't home. Oh, I get it. Very funny. I'm up to my neck in funny people. No, seriously, I wish Lucy would go out and get some fun for herself now and then. Do her good. That's the trouble with marriage. People are always imagining things, and the next thing you know, they end up in a divorce court. Uh, the broad-minded man from Miami. Well, if you think you're going to get a chance to prove my broad-mindedness, you're crazy. She's up at Aunt Patsy's cabin, and I'll bet on her. Saying, is that a spot? Hello, but... everybody. Hello. Oh, up at Aunt Patsy's cabin, eh? Well, there's Patsy now. Some fun, huh? Oh, <laughs> shut up. Hello, Patsy. How did you get here? By invitation, Lucy invited me yesterday on the phone. Say, what is this? Lucy invites me? No, Lucy. Where is she? That, it seems, is a $64 question. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Lucy. Hello. Hey, Lucy. Hello, Jerry. Jerry, Hello. darling. Hello, gee, it's good to see you. Oh, darling, it's grand. You're looking marvelous. Oh, I nearly forgot Amo. Amo, come on in and meet everyone. Amo's the best music teacher a woman ever had, aren't you, Amo? Thank you, my dear. Jerry, you know Amo Laval, of course. Oh, yes, I never forget a toupee. So you teach music, huh? <laughs> yes. I didn't know there was any left. Everybody else is Amo. How do you do? How do you do? Well, now that we're all introduced, I can relax. Oh, Amo and I have had the most terrible time, Jerry. I imagine you must have. Where was the recital? Silly, what do you mean? Well, I didn't know they had recitals in the morning and that you went to them in evening clothes. Pretty formal, isn't it? <laughs> Armon does look silly in tails at this time of the day, doesn't he? On the contrary, I think Armon would look natural with a tail any time. <laughs> he had such an awful night. Why, did somebody sing Frenesy? <sighs> oh, stop. <laughs> stop it, darling. You don't know what happened. Armon's car broke down a million miles from nowhere. He had to park me at a farmhouse and hike to the nearest town to get them to tow the car, and he had to stay there and hang around garages and things to pick me up in the morning and bring me home. Oh, it was dreadful. We were coming home from a party. You stole that plot from Philadelphia Story. <laughs> Jerry, you understand, don't you? Oh, sure, sure, but just to make sure, I'm going to run upstairs and write a letter to Dorothy Dix. Mr. Warner, you have the continental mind. Sure, that's it. I've got a continental mind. <laughs> oh, Lucy, dear, I'm so sorry. I'll have to run so soon. Yes, I've got to run too. Oh, oh, stick oh, around. The party hasn't even started yet. We're going to open a bottle of 7-Up. Oh, sure, sure. We know. <laughs> you, uh, you probably want to talk to Lucy. Come on, people. Give you all a hint. Yeah, okay. Bye, everybody. Well, Mr. Laval, why didn't you let Frank give you a hitch? I wanted to explain. You see, Mr. Warren, uh, the next time I take your wife out, I hope... I uh, hope you buy a new car or else I'll loan you mine. Are you hungry? Why, yes, I am star. Well, why don't you run out and get some breakfast? A fellow like you should take care of himself, sitting in drafty garages all night. Mr. Warner, what have I done? That's what I'm going to find out. Jerry, you... you don't believe this. We'll discuss this in private, please. That is, if Mr. Laval can remember where we keep our door. Very well. Perhaps it is best this way, Lucy. Will I see you soon? Of course. It has all been so perfect. Thank you for everything. And, Mr. Warner, I think you must be out of your continental mind. <laughs> that was pretty funny at that. I, uh, I mean, what he just said. <laughs> Very funny. I haven't laughed so much since you wore your last hat. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's gone. You can speak freely, darling. Well, Lucy, what have you got to say for, for yourself? yourself? Smart, aren't you? Well, I knew you'd say that, and I'm prepared to answer. Almo was invited to the party by a young man whose sister is a pupil of Almo's. Amo invited me to go along. I went because I could think of nothing better to do. Believe it or not, I was lonely. And then the car broke down. Yes, his car is very old. So is his story. I've used it myself. <laughs> uh, before we were married, I mean. <laughs> do 
Do you want me to go on? Sure, let's have all the morbid details. I've got a grudge against myself. What happened next? Well, I stayed at the farmhouse. I slept badly because of insufficient blankets. Twice during the night, I sneezed. Now, let me see. Was there anything else? Yes, the rooster said Gesundheit. <laughs> Lucy, this situation isn't as amusing as you think it is. If you had the sense to see it, you'd know that our marriage is teetering on the edge of a cliff while you're trying to be funny. I guess our marriage doesn't mean anything to you. Maybe you have no sentiment left for me. Look at this on the table, a letter I wrote you from Florida. You didn't even open it. Oh, I, I'm sure you wrote the letter, darling. But are you sure you mailed it? Wasn't it some friend of yours in Miami? What are you talking about? Darling, I don't like to be unpleasant, but you weren't in Florida. Don't change the subject, at least not in that direction. <laughs> you weren't in Florida and you weren't in Montreal that time you said you were going there. Once you even had the letters mailed from the wrong place. Dear Lucy, Charleston is such a quaint city. If you were in Charleston, how come you mailed this letter from Perth Amboy, New Jersey? <laughs> Well, I always take a walk before breakfast. <laughs> but you can't justify your behavior by insinuating things about me. But I haven't any behavior to justify. I've just been unlucky, that's all. You came home and caught me in the truth, and, well, it seems there's nothing less logical than the truth. Oh, a philosopher, eh? You don't believe me? How can I believe you? Listen, Jerry, don't you see that there can't be any doubt in marriage? The whole thing is built on faith and... Well, if you've lost that, you've lost everything. Yeah, and I suppose when that's gone, the marriage is washed up, isn't it? You mean that? Sure. Well, I guess that settles it. I guess it does. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't go on living with you if you were dipped in platinum. So go on. Divorce me. You're no bargain even if I did meet you in a dollar day. Divorce you? Are you crazy? Do you think I want people to think you preferred that, that eight-bar rest to me? <laughs> All right, then, I'll divorce you. That's customary anyway. It has something to do with the husband being a gentleman. Never mind the gentleman stuff. Just get going on Fine, it. Fine, I'll call the lawyer right away. And, uh, by the way, darling, what's the most convenient day for you to be divorced? And in the case of Warner versus Warner, the court grants an interlocutory decree of divorce to the plaintiff, Lucy Warner... Divorce, if not further contested, will become final in 90 days from this date. That'll be all. One moment, Your Honor. There's one matter still unsettled. According to my client, Mr. Warner, it's the matter of... It's uh... the matter of Mr. Smith. Yes, Your Honor, Mr. Smith. And who is Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith is, uh... uh he's their dog. Mr. Smith is my dog. He's mine. He is not. Silence! But Mr. Smith belongs to me, and she's got him. I told you to keep quiet. Oh, ignore him, Your Honor. I told you he was impossible to get along with. Don't listen to Mrs. Warner. The dog is mine. I bought a license for each of them. Quiet! <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, he's mine. Let's have the facts now. The animal at present is in Mrs. Warner's possession. Mr. Warner wishes to have him because... Uh... Because he's mine. He is not. He is so. He is not. He is so. He is not. It seems to be a custody case. In custody cases, we frequently permit the final decision to rest with the, uh, <clears throat> the dog. Yeah, but suppose he wants to live with both of us. Which end will I get? As if I didn't know. Silence! <laughs> <laughs> Bailiff, have the dog brought in. The custody of the dog will depend upon his own desires. And let me warn you, neither of you must use any false means of influencing the animal's decision. Unfasten the dog, please. Now, you may each call the dog. Come on, fellas. Come on, Mrs. Smith. Come Sid. to me. Come to Mama. I'm taking over a can of dog food. Come, come to Papa, to boy. Mama. Here's here. Mama, boy. Never mind, Mama. Add come to Papa. Baby. Here. Hey, come back here. Come boy. back here, Smith. Uh, you know who's good for you, don't you? Mr. Smith came to me, Your Honor. Custody of the dog is awarded to Mrs. Warner. What? Wait a minute. Silence. I object. That dog is you. He's suffering from amnesia. Silence. The court is adjourned. Good day, Your Honor. You. Wait a minute. Come back here, you. You mean me? Yeah, what's that Mr. Smith has in his mouth? Why, it looks like a rubber bone, doesn't it? Well, it ain't no upper plate. <laughs> Where'd he get it? I, uh, always knew it was his favorite bone. Where'd he get it? Well, how would I know? You'd stoop to anything. You had that bone under your handbag. Mr. Smith smelled it and came in on the beam. You think you're going to get him away from him like me like that? Get him? I've got him, darling. Bye. <laughs> Look at that rain. Why, Aunt Patsy? Is it doing anything besides falling? I don't think so. Nothing unusual ever happens around here. 
If I'd known we were going to be buried side by side, I'd never have consented to take an apartment with you. But I needed you, Aunt Patsy. You know the period of readjustment that comes in the wake of a divorce. Readjustment my foot. That's just another word for moping around. Oh, don't be silly, Patsy. Why, you know dozens of men who turn handsprings at the chance to take you out. But no, you'd rather sit around and readjust yourself. Oh, you're just an old grouch, that's all. Yeah, well, this old grouch wants to go somewhere where there's life. And I don't mean plant life. Well, we can't go out without escorts, so that's that. Lucy, I don't need an escort to go down to the lobby. I'm going down to the newsstand and see Joe. He may be funny looking, but he's a man. Maybe he knocks off early. Patsy, you wouldn't. I wouldn't, eh? You're talking to a desperate woman. Well, I guess I've read pretty nearly everything here, Joe. Oh, gee, I'm sorry, ma'am. Hmm, and I'm so bored. It's too bad they stopped printing zippy stories. Yes, ma'am, that's what my wife says. Oh, there I. Well, that settles that. Pardon me, but did that copy come in of the Tulsa, Oklahoma bugle? Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Leeson. I guess maybe there's something wrong with the mail. Oh, that's too bad. Shucks. Looks like I won't find out how we did at the Rodale. Oh, how do, ma'am? Oh, how do you do? <laughs> Hope you don't think I'm fresh, ma'am. My name's Dan Leeson. Room 1214. Me and Mama see you coming in and going out sometimes. Oh, we've noticed you, too. No fooling. <laughs> well, say, who's that beautiful girl who's with you sometimes? She has a dog and, well, she's beautiful. That's my niece, Lucy. She's just a little homebody. No. Say, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Why, of course I would, Mr. Leeson. What is it? Well, I'm a stranger in town and me and Mama don't know any folks. Right in, Mr. Leeson. Thanks very much. I think it's just wonderful that we met this way. Oh, uh, Lucy, may I present Mr. Leeson? Mr. Mr. Leeson, this is my niece you were so anxious to meet. Her name is uh, Lucy Warriner. How do you do? How do you do, ma'am? Mr. Leeson's from Oklahoma, Lucy, and he'd take it as being right neighborly of us if we'd show him some of the bright spots. Well, it's, it's raining rather hard. Uh, and Mr. I... Leeson lives right across the hall with his mother, uh... Isn't that what you said with your mother? Yeah, with my ma. We're here on a visit. I got 30 oil wells out near Tulsa. Mmm, how lubricating. <laughs> See, uh, tell us about Oklahoma, Miss Leeson. Well, we all think Oklahoma's pretty darn swell. We think... Oh, there's the door. I'll get it. Yes, Miss Leeson? Like I was saying, Oklahoma is pretty darn swell. Hello, Aunt Patsy. Oh, Jerry. Well, how's the old girl? Still hitting the adrenaline? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, how you stand in the rainy weather? Uh-huh. We never let an occasional drip bother us come right in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Patsy. Where's Lucy? Oh, you've got company, huh? Well, well, hello, Lucy. Hello. Uh, um, what do you want? I'll just read this little legal document. I guess it'll explain things better than I could. What's this? It's a writ, that's what it is. The court just ruled that I'm allowed to borrow my dog any time I want. It's sort of a Len Leash bill. <laughs> <laughs> the order reads that I can visit with him and entertain him in any form or manner that does not endanger life or limb. Oh, so now I suppose you've come to take him bicycling. No, I've tried that. His paws don't reach the pedals. <laughs> hey, Smitty, where are you? Where are you, Smitty? Come to Papa, Smitty. I'll go get him for you. Miss Warner, maybe I'd better leave. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Leeson. This, uh, this is my husband. Oh, I mean... Oh! <laughs> well, he's only my husband for... How much longer is it? Uh, Sixty days. Uh, Fifty-nine. How are you, Mr. Leeson? Howdy. I'm glad to know you. Excuse me, what'd you say? I said I'm glad to know you. Well, how can you be glad to know me? I, I know how I'd feel if I was sitting with a girl and her husband walked in. I'll bet you do. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Anyway, I'm glad to see you, Mr. Leeson. You known Lucy very long? Lucy? Yeah, Lucy, my wife. Well, no. As a matter of fact, I'm a stranger here. I'm from Oklahoma. No. That's right. <laughs> I'm an oil. What's that? I said, I'm in oil. <laughs> oh, 
marinated, eh? Well, <laughs> I thought so. Jerry. Uh, Jerry, uh, why don't you go play with the dog? Oh, sure. Where is he? Hey, Mr. Smith. See his master's voice. Gee, old fella, it's good to see you. Oh, stop licking his face, Jerry. <laughs> But I brought you your old leather strap. Come on, old fellow, let's have a tug of war. You were telling us about Oklahoma, Mr. Atta Atta boy, boy. Well, I'm really a man of many interests out there, Mrs. Warner. Oil is my main business, of course, and I can't complain about that. It's treated me fine. Then I have a big ranch, more of a hobby. The lamp, Jerry! Oh, how did that happen? It was Smitty. He was playing yo-yo with a cat. Well, how could that possibly be? Long tail. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pay any attention to him, Mr. Leeson. Please go on. Well, uh, this ranch is just outside of Tulsa. I have just about everything there. Good heavens. Jerry, did you drop your teeth again? No, do you have to play that game? No, any other ones? Yes, get his rubber bone for him. He loves that bone. Yeah, I remember. Where is it? In the closet right there. In here? That's right. I can't find it. Just keep looking. Hey, what is this? You locked the door on me. Hey, let me out. Aunt Patsy, what are you doing? Lucy, dear, why don't you run along with Mr. Leeson? Patsy, let me out of here. I'm locked in. Say, is anything wrong? Oh, no. That's just a game Mr. Warren has with the dog. Oh. <laughs> I want to get out of here. Oh, dear. Come on, Mr. Leeson. Let's go. Well. Good night, Aunt Patsy. I hope you know what you're doing. Good night, dear. Night. Night. I'll break the door down if you don't let me out of here. I'll... Just a minute. Just a minute. Come out, Jerry. Oh, frame. That's what I am. Frame. Where'd she go? Who? I know what's going on, Patsy. You're trying to cook up something between my wife and that marinated herring. <laughs> and it ain't chowder. Your wife? She's still my wife for 60 days. 59. All right, 59. But she's still my wife. Do you understand? And what are you going to do about it? You'll find out what I'm going to do. Stick around and watch. I've got some rights around here. Of course, Jerry. To entertain Mr. Smith in any form or manner. Boy, they sure misnamed you, Patsy. They should have called you Patsy. <laughs> In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Bob Hope, Constance Bennett, and Ralph Bellamy, will bring us Act Two of The Awful Truth. Meantime, let's reenact a little scene that took place in a big office just after lunch the other day. Hello, Sue. Well, what's got you looking so starry-eyed? Boyfriend, take you to lunch? Mabel, who do you think was in the elevator when I went down to lunch? Madeline Carroll. Really? No kidding. I heard she was in town, Matt. I was standing right next to her. She got on at the eighth floor with a couple of very important-looking men. And, Mabel, she was dressed just as plain as you or I. I mean, she had on a tailored suit and a little felt hat. Oh, but, Mabel, I'm telling you, she certainly has got glamour. Is she as good-looking right close as she is on the screen? I got a wonderful chance to see, standing so close. Real blonde hair, big blue eyes, and, Mabel, what a complexion. Smooth, and I mean smooth. Mabel, you know what I'm going to do tonight on the way home? What? Get some Lux soap. Madeline Carroll always uses it, you know. And from now on, I'm not missing a single day on my Lux soap care. And I don't mean maybe. Smart young Sue. It's a fact, you know, that Madeline Carroll, like nine out of ten other Hollywood stars, cares for that exquisite complexion of hers with regular use of gentle white Lux toilet soap. In her own words, this is what she says. Complexion beauty should be cherished. I've found the right care for my skin. Active lather facials with Lux soap really work for me. And if you were to ask Madeline Carroll how to take a Lux soap active lather facial, here's what she'd tell you. Pat the Lux soap lather lightly into your skin. Rinse with warm water, then with cool. Pat dry with a soft towel. Now see how fresh your skin looks. There is a simple, inexpensive beauty routine any woman can follow, and right in her own home. It takes just a few minutes, you know. So why don't you try these Lux soap facials for 30 days? Just see if this gentle care doesn't leave your skin feeling smoother, softer. Remember, a soap used by famous screen stars, the world's loveliest women, just has to be something special. So, get three cakes of Lux toilet soap tomorrow. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act Two of The Awful Truth, starring Bob Hope as Jerry Warner, Constance Bennett as Lucy, 
and Ralph Bellamy as Dan. It's morning, a few weeks after Jerry's hectic visit. Across the breakfast table in their lonely apartment, Aunt Patsy's looking at her niece with an expression of growing horror. What did you say, Lucy? I said, of course I like Dan Neeson. Why shouldn't I? He's sweet and thoughtful. Well, you should be the last one to object. You introduced me to him, after all. Only because he was a man who could take us out. I didn't expect you to get silly about him. Is it silly to like a man who's sane and considerate? I was married to one of those gay romantic types, and one is enough. Your toast is burning. Lucy, do you know what rebound is? That business of trying to get over one love affair by bouncing into love with somebody else? It's fine, except the rebound is rarely the real thing. There's the first bounce, the second bounce, and... Well, look at me. You wind up like an old tennis ball. I tell you, I'm serious about Dan Leeson. He's a fine person. I like him very much. And I'm all through with Jerry. He doesn't mean a thing to me, not a thing. I don't love him, and what's more, I probably never did. I guess that surprises you, doesn't it? I hate Jerry Warner. And I like Dan Leeson very, very much. I can hardly wait to see him tonight, and I hope he's just as mad about me because I think he's the finest man I've ever met. Lucy! I know. My toast is burning. Honest to goodness, Mr. Warner, I think it's simply wonderful of you all to come here just to hear me sing. Yes, I can listen to you sing till the cows come home. What time do they usually get here? <laughs> oh, Mr. Warner, you're awful sweet and all that, but you always seem to have your mind on something else. Or, or maybe it's someone else. Am I right, sugar pie? Yes, I'm in love with love. In the spring, a young man's fancy lightly turns to what he's been thinking about all winter. <laughs> How long have you been talking like Amos and Andy? <laughs> oh, for a long time. It helps me in my work. Well, shut my mouth. You shut it. You're nearer to it than I am. <laughs> Mr. Warner, who's that gorgeous creature just coming in? Where? Oh, that creature. Well, you've heard that gag that's flying around town. Who was that lady I saw you with? Oh, you mean that's no lady? That's your wife? Uh-huh. That's my wife. I guess this is our table over here, Lucy. Sit down. Come on over and meet my better half before the odds drop. <laughs> Hello, folks. Oh, Hello. Uh, this is Miss Dixie Bell Lee. This is Mrs. Warner, and this is Mr. Leeson from Tulsa. Flowing gold, Leeson. He's a big oil man. Oh, an oil man. Crude. I wouldn't know. Ask my wife. <laughs> well, I'm proud to meet you all. Now, you're sure we're not intruding? Huh? Well, well, what do you mean? Well, wouldn't you like us to have a drink? Why? Thanks, you... Dan. I will. Well, yes, of course. Well, sit down, Dixie. Well, now, isn't this cozy? So you two are going to be married, eh, Lucy? Well, I always approve of marriage. I think it's a wonderful way to spend a few weeks. And I was glad when I heard about it. I said to myself, that Leeson's just the man for Lucy. And then I said to myself, you're nuts. Oh, pay no attention to him. He's always talking to himself. Um, this is a charming place, don't you think, Miss... Uh, uh, Dixie Bell Lee. Uh, do you like it, honey? I'm so glad, because I kind of feel the place is mine. Oh, do you come here often? Oh, I work here. Didn't you all know that? No. Say, you're from the South, aren't you? <laughs> now, isn't he just the cleverest yet? How'd you all ever guess that, Mr. Man? Oh, he's pretty fast in his feet, this fella. But you see, folks... Dixie Bell Lee isn't her real name. No? No, no, she changed it because her family objected to her going into show business. You see, it was quite a shock to them because they made all their money tilting pinball machines. <laughs> isn't that right, Dixie? Well, that's right. Well, I guess I'd better go now and get into my costume. Uh, reckon y'all can stay to see my ass? Of course we'll stay. Nothing could drag us away. Well, I'll see you later, sugar pie. I'll be here, sponge cake. <laughs> uh, she... She seems like quite a nice girl, Jerry. Oh, she is. But wait till you hear her sing, A Golden Throat. That's what I keep coming here all the time just to listen to her. How faithful of you. Does she really sing awful good? Well, I don't think her singing's up to Lucy's, but Dixie has a sort of elfin charm, a je ne sais quoi, if you know what I mean, and I don't. <laughs> um, Dan, dear, don't, don't you think you ought to ask Jerry about it now? About what? About our mine, Jerry. What mine? Our mine, you know, our coal mine. It's our last tie, Jerry, and, well, I was telling Mr. Leeson how badly it was doing, and he thought maybe he could do better with it. That's right. I, I'd like to gamble on it, Mr. Warner. I'm pretty lucky. Know what they call me out west? 
Yeah, is that why you came east? <laughs> Say, how about us having a conference at my apartment tomorrow? Well, I, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's with great pleasure that I present that great little artist, Miss Dictionary. Give her a there she comes. Isn't she pretty? She sure is. The uh, costume's a little short, isn't it? Yeah, it's a southern costume, sort of a lily cup with a bustle. Listen to this. This is great. Oh, oh Maxwell, friend of the honey. Where Yippee! Tear it down! Yahoo! Sure, not bad, eh? Say, she go break in Oklahoma. Swing it, miss! Yippee! Dan, I, I don't feel very well. Well, what's the trouble, Lucy? Well, Dan, uh, take me home. But, Lucy, we can't walk out in the middle of Miss Lee singing. Don't you like her, Lucy? No, I just love her. I can see where it was a lot easier for her to change her name than for her whole family to change theirs. Come on, Dan. Well, if you want to, Lucy... Don't forget tomorrow afternoon to my father, Mr. Warner, about those mines. I always wanted to be a miner. I'll be there, Brother Miner. Keep a light burning in your hat. I want to hear all about this mine. Well, I've got all the records and history with me. By the way, Lucy, I searched all over for the report McCaw made before we bought it, but I couldn't find it. You must have it. Oh, perhaps I have. Well, when you get a chance, take a look through your stocking drawer. You know, Dan, she always hides important things in the top drawer of her dresser. <laughs> she does? Oh, sure. That's an old habit of hers. Every, every legal paper we ever had smelled of sachet. Even our marriage certificate smelled. <laughs> Jerry... About the mine. Oh, yes, the mine. Now, here's the prospectus. Good afternoon. Oh, come on in, Ma. Come in. Hello, Mrs. Leeson. Good afternoon, Lucy. Guess you don't know this fella here. He's Jerry Warner, Ma. Hello. Warner? Uh, you mean that, uh, that, that, that he is? Yes, uh... that's right, Ma. He's the one. Well, <laughs> very funny seeing you here, Mr. Warner. Is it? <laughs> well, it's funny seeing you anywhere. <laughs> I met some people today, and they spoke about you and uh, about Lucy. They knew you both before the divorce. Oh, I imagine you'll run into scads of people who did. They spoke very well of you, Mr. Warner. They said you were a real gentleman. <laughs> well, you can't please everybody. <laughs> they talked about Lucy, too. Ah, oh, it's good not to be forgotten by your old friends. You know, Lucy, as many times as I've heard your fine singing, I never realized that you must have had a teacher. <laughs> they tell me he's been uh, teaching you for some time, and uh, he's a very romantic type. <laughs> the woman I was talking to told me that, uh, oh, well, no matter. <laughs> What's that? Uh, now, look at this map, Lisa, and you see there's a new opening in the northern side. Here, I'll show you the prospectus. Jerry, now... I think I ought to tell you that nobody's listening to you. Well, for me, that's a large audience, but what could possibly be more interesting than the war in her mind? The war on a divorce. The gal's name needs clearing, partner. That's ridiculous. Is it really? Mrs. Leeson, our divorce was one of those tragedies you read about in the newspapers. A trusting woman and a worthless man. Lucy is above suspicion and always has been. She is as pure as the driven snow and as faithful as she is fair. I tell you, something wonderful went out of my life when I lost her. It's an awful feeling. It's like not being home when the pot of gold calls. <laughs> I know just how you feel, Mr. Warner. How do you know? How can you know how I feel to have used up the best years of a woman's life? Well, folks, that's the way it goes. I'll be leaving now. Excuse me, ma'am. You're sitting on my prospectus. Huh? Oh, <laughs> sorry. I'll be going now. Well, take good care of her, Dan, won't you? I'm sure you'll be happy out where the West begins, all three of you. <laughs> Goodbye now, and give my regards to the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Lucy? Yes? Lucy, this is Jerry. I've got to see you tonight. I'm sorry, Jerry. Listen, Lucy, it's important. We've had enough of this foolishness. I want to talk things over. Oh, you do? Well, not tonight, Jerry. I'm going to a recital at uh, Armand Laval. Well, I don't... What? Oh, Laval again, eh? Well, you're not going. <laughs> 
I'm sorry, Jerry. Listen, you're still my wife. If I find you with that Laval bird, I'll tear him limb from limb. Do you hear? I hear. Goodbye, Jerry. I'm late for the recital already. Hello, hello, hello. Operator, return my slug. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. I want to see Mr. Armand Lavelle. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Recital going on. Is my wife in there? Oh, uh, plenty of people. I don't know. Well, let me go see. Oh, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. You cannot go in. Listen, who are you to tell me where I can go? I'm Mr. Lavelle, Filipino boy. Yeah, we'll stand back. No, 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 no. I'll stop you. Oh, you will, eh? How? Oh, uh, jiu You go push past me. I take your hand like this. Yeah, and then what? I go like this. Oh! Well, don't stand there. Look around for my right leg. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. I not mean to hurt. Listen, I'm going in there, see? I know a few jujitsu tricks of my own. Oh, that's so? Yeah. I put my hand like this, see? And then I do like this. No, 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 no. Like this, much better. Oh! <laughs> you see? I win again. Yeah, well, you haven't seen the last of me. I'll be back and give you what you deserve. As soon as I can get my hip back inside my skin. <laughs> know is what has Armand Laval got to do with this? Why is he coming here? Because I sent for him. You said that. I still say why. He ruined your last happy home. You'll bust the Oklahoma deal wide open. That's just it. There isn't going to be any Oklahoma deal. Huh? I'm not going to marry Dan Leeson. Why not? Because I'm I'm still in love with that crazy lunatic Jerry Warren and there's nothing I can do about it. There's... I'm a gibbering idiot. I'm a mad woman. Patsy, stop it. There he is now. Oh, good evening, Alma. Good evening, Lucy. I got your call. What is the trouble? Look, Alma, sit down. It's about Jerry. Ah, yes, your husband. He's a very funny man, yes? Yes, he is. But I'm convinced he still cares about me, or he wouldn't do the funny things he does. Yes, but he does not care much about me. No, no, he doesn't. And that's just what I'm getting at. You know everything was all right that night. I want you to convince him that everything was just as we said it was. I will be glad to. Does he carry a gun? Well, you're not afraid of him. Oh, of course not, but you know husbands. Then then you'll do it as soon as possible, won't you? And uh, he mustn't know that I've had anything to do with it. Very well. As soon as possible? Open up. It's my day to see Mr. Smith. It's Jerry. Oh, but this is much too soon. Yes, isn't it? Well, well do something. Oh, what shall I do? Well, you just can't stand there. Go on in the other room. Hurry, and, and don't come out. Oh, I do not care for this. Oh, let him in, Aunt Patsy. Oh, dear. You said it. Greetings, Patsy. Oh, uh, <laughs> hello. Uh, hello, Lucy. Uh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Well, I, uh, guess you two want to be alone. No, Patsy. I'll uh, whip up a little omelet in the kitchen. Uh, smart girl, your Aunt Patsy. I did want to be alone. Oh, yes? Well, look, Lucy, let's get right down to it. I've been a sap. Have you? I just said so. About this whole business, I got so jealous that, well, I, I saw red. But it's all blue now. Get it? Black and blue, isn't it? Yeah. Lucy, I want to apologize. I know that Sap Louval couldn't have meant anything to you. Guys like him just make me murderous. I just, well, I just want to say I'm sorry for everything. Oh, yes? And uh, what about this Barbara Vance girl you've been running around with? Huh? That's society, Blue Blood. The morning paper said you were going to marry her. Oh, that's nothing. A misprint, you see. Never she... mind explaining. Let's meet later and talk it over. Goodbye, Jerry. Yeah, but I just... Here's your hat. Goodbye, Jerry. Yeah, but I'll I... I'll call you later. Goodbye. Say, are you trying to get rid of me? Of course not. Why should I try to get rid of you? Here's your hat. My hat? That isn't my hat. Oh, no. Isn't it? No, look. Comes down over my ears. <laughs> well, isn't that funny? Uh, did you get a haircut, maybe? Not since I came in here. <laughs> but I think I'm getting a clipping now. <laughs> Take a look at it. Doesn't it look funny to you? Hmm, yes, it does look a little roomy. But uh, maybe they're wearing them that way this year. No, I don't think so. Not as big as this. My chin is resting on the sweatband. <laughs> Aunt Patsy, the bell. All right. Look, if you've got company... Oh, I... it's nobody. Just Dan Leeson, probably. Leeson? Well, I don't want him to see me here. I've caused you enough trouble. I'll just duck in the other room. No, no, Jerry. Oh, but I want you to be happy, Lucy. I'll wait in there till I've gone. Jerry, listen, wait. Oh, uh... 
Hello, Miss Adams. It's Mr. Leeson and his mother, Lucy. Hello, Lucy. Oh. Lucy, dear, I've come to tell you something. Oh, uh, hello, hello. We've come to tell you, Lucy. Yes, well, well, what have you come to tell me? I want to apologize for those awful things I accused you of, Lucy. Yes, go on. Look, what's that? I uh, think somebody's cleaning up in the other room. Lucy, I, I don't want you to be angry with me for repeating what that awful woman said about your divorce. No, oh, well, of course not. I, I'm not. What nonsense. What is that? Well, let me alone. Don't but, kill me. I'll break your neck. I'll tear you apart. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. You hide her behind closed doors. I'll break every bone in your body. Oh, don't me. forget don't to touch her. second, boys. <laughs> Dropped in. Dan? Dan, I think we'd better go. Two men hiding in the other room. Just a minute. Well, Mrs. Warner, I guess a man's best friend is his mother. I certainly learned about women from you. Come on, Ma. Wait a minute. You can't fire us. We quit. I'll teach oh. you, you little mouse. Oh, let me go. Jerry, let him alone. Stand still and fight. Be careful Jerry, now. Jerry, stop it. You break her up of homes, I'll kill you. Let go. Jerry. I'm going to teach you once and for all. I'm sorry to do this, Mr. Warner. You're sorry to do what, you little rat? This. Oh! My Filipino boy taught me jujitsu. Madame Mazanga told me there'd be nights like this. <laughs> After a short intermission, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Bob Hope, Constance Bennett, and Ralph Bellamy, will bring you Act Three of The Awful Truth. Meanwhile, let's listen to how a near crisis was averted in the Davis family the other evening. Just time for a shower before dinner. Hey, Mary, I can't use this sissy stuff you got in here. Where's some of that Lux soap? I want some real lather. Oh, you poor dear. I forgot to take that awful stuff out of the bathroom. It's some soap I wanted, Bridge. I thought I ought to use up. Here's what you want. A nice new cake of Lux soap. Well, it is an awful letdown to bathroom baritones when they find that someone has spirited away their Lux soap. Because Lux toilet soap makes a wonderful bath soap. It gives rich, luxurious lather in a jiffy, active lather that quickly removes perspiration, every trace of dust and dirt, and leaves you feeling like a million. Now, a man might not admit it, but he's likely to be just as fussy as a woman about the soap he uses. You can count on it. The man of your family yearns for a good, firm cake of soap that gives quick, abundant lather, even in hard water, and you won't disappoint him if you always have plenty of Lux toilet soap in the bathroom. Fortunately, you can let the whole family enjoy this luxurious soap and still be economical. Lux soap costs only a few cents a cake, you know. And here's another important thing you'll notice. Lux toilet soap is hard milled, can be used right down to the last thin sliver. It's really thrifty. So give your family this soap that's as fine as money can buy. Get a supply of Lux toilet soap tomorrow. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. The curtain rises on the third act of The Awful Truth. Two weeks have gone by, and the divorce is almost final. Jerry is now determined to marry the society heiress, and Lucy is just as determined to prevent it. In Jerry's apartment, she stands facing him, smiling coyly. Hello, Jerry. Hello. What do you want here? Well, I, I just thought I'd... You know what today is, don't you? Certainly. Our divorce becomes final tonight at 12 o'clock, and tomorrow we'll both be back in circulation. That's right, so... So I just thought I'd drop up to wish you a lot of luck. Well, that's very nice of you, but I'm just on my way out. Where to? Well, if you must know, I'm on my way out to a pre-engagement dinner for me and Barbara at the Vance's. Jerry, you can't. Why not? I'm hungry. <laughs> you can't 
not because you love me. Of course I loved you. I said love, not loved. Oh, you're so stubborn. You're throwing away our happiness. Barbara's a fine girl. We'll get along swell together. But that isn't necessarily happiness, Jerry. You and I fight, and we disagree on every subject under the sun, but we were happy. I was happy with you, yes, but Armand and I are incompatible. <laughs> Jerry, for heaven's sake, you can't go through with this. You'll be miserable. Oh, you dope. Why can't you understand? Will you please stop, Lucy? Where's your Dan Leeson? Why don't you go back to that fugitive from Boomtown? <laughs> I'll make it. Oh, no, you won't. This is my house, and get out of the booth. I've got it. Hello? Hello? Oh, hello. Well, who is this, may I ask? Give me that phone. Jerry, I, I think it's what's-her-name. Hello? Hello? You have to answer my telephone? I only said hello. Shut up. Now, what am I going to tell her? Tell her Tell her to call you back. Yeah. Oh, shut up. Hello? Hello, darling? Well, it took you long enough. Have you made up your mind who the woman is? Oh, that's very funny. I knew you were going to ask me that. Oh, so did I. Was she? Oh, it's really very simple. That was my, uh, uh, my sister. Really? I didn't know you had a sister. If I could only be drafted right this minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure, honey. She just got back from Chicago, dropped in to see me, you know. How sisterly. Oh, I'd love to meet your sister, Jerry. Why don't you bring her along tonight? Oh, no, I don't think she can come over this evening. She has a previous engagement. Well, naturally, she's very anxious to meet you, too, dear. Yes, tell her I'd love to meet her. Tell her to wear boxing gloves. Shut up. Barbara, I'll do my best to fix it up so the two of you'll meet very soon. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Hurry over. I will. Now I'm in a fine fix. She wants to meet my sister. Well? You're a big help. If I had a sister like you, I'd have my parents get an injunction. <laughs> well, you know me. Anything I can do. Yeah, to break it up? I see what you mean. I'm in a fine mess. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it, Jerry. She trusts you, doesn't she? Of course she does. Sure, sure. But she'll learn. Just give her time. Sit down, my boy. Sit down. Oh, thanks, Mr. Vance. It's too bad your sister couldn't come tonight, Jerry. Oh, yes, she was terribly sorry, Mrs. Vance. You see, she, uh... She didn't weather the boat trip very well. Boat trip? I thought you said she just came from Chicago. Uh, yeah, the hard way, I mean. <laughs> well, you can imagine my surprise when I heard a woman's voice on the phone. Well, you can't blame me for being suspicious, Jerry, darling. Oh, well, certainly. I mean, of course not. I was thinking, dear mother, don't you think it would be nice if I asked Jerry's sister to be a bridesmaid? Oh, lovely. Well, I, I think she's sailing back to Chicago right away. <laughs> uh... You'd like my sister, though, Barbara. She's very much your type. Where did she go to school? Well, she, she did what? Uh, I said, where did she go to school? Oh, in Switzerland. Oh. And you say your father was a Princeton man. Oh, uh, that's right. Class of 92. Uh, he tells some very funny stories about the place in those days, too. He, he tells one in particular about a football game. It seems Yale was playing Princeton one day, and... I beg your pardon, Mrs. Vance. Yes, Edwards? Mr. Jerry's sister has arrived. Huh? Miss Lulu Warriner. Hello. Well, I made it, Jerry, dear. Surprised. You maniac. What'd you say, dear? Oh, I just asked how you were feeling. Oh, fine, fine. I'm feeling fine. Uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Vance, may I present my sister, uh, Lulu? <coughs> and what a Lulu. <laughs> uh, how do you do? It's so lovely to know you, Mrs. Vincy. Vance, dear, Vance. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, Barbara, this is Lulu. How do you do? How do you do? You know, it's nice getting a chance to meet you, too. Uh, I've seen your pictures in the paper, and I wondered what you really looked like. Well, I've wondered about you, too. Thank you. Say, uh, did I interrupt something? Well, I was telling a story about my, uh, about Dad. D oh, you mean Pop. Well, go right ahead, dear. Oh, thanks. You see, Mr. Vance, it was Yale's ball on Prince's two-yard line. Oh, Mrs. Vance, and... I don't like to appear rude, but I wonder if I could have a teeny-weeny little drinky. I had three or four before I got here, but they're beginning to wear off, and you know how that is. Now, wait a minute. Now, don't you look at me like that, Jerry. You know perfectly well that you like a little drink now and then yourself. And we call him Jerry the Nipper. He likes to sneak them when nobody's looking. He's awful cute about it, too. I've seen him go along all evening just as if he didn't have a thing to drink and all of a sudden fall flat on his puss. Glass <laughs> <laughs> of sherry for Miss Warrener, please. Yeah, and come back dancing, Eddie. 
Say, I, I'm sorry to barge in on you like this, honey. What were you saying? Oh, well, I was just telling them one of Father's stories. Oh, well, I wouldn't do that. Well, I've cleaned it up. But you see, there was a... <laughs> there was a minute to go. Dad had the ball. Ball? And... What ball? The football. Now, what in the world was Dad ever doing with a football? Well, I, I, I was just telling a story about when Father was at Princeton. You remember that? Oh, gee, of course I remember. Pop loved Princeton. He was there nearly 20 years. If ever a man loved a place, he just did. He adored it. And he sure kept it looking beautiful, too. <laughs> You've seen the grounds, of course. Of course. <laughs> I'm afraid that my sister has a distorted sense of humor. So have I. You just told us your father played for Princeton. Well, you see... Jerry, did you say that? Listen, you... <laughs> Well, I guess that's just one of Jerry's stories again. You see, when Jerry and I was kids, we was the worst liars in the neighborhood. We always used to pretend we had rich relatives who were going to die and leave us dough. But I guess it was harmless enough. Everybody knew we was just sort of kidding ourselves. Uh, yeah, let her ramble. My folks were worried about her. At the age of five, she didn't have a foreign. <laughs> now, me, if you take me, I'm different. It ain't money that counts with me or position in life. It's art. All the time I was working at the Virginia Club, I thought you that... You worked at the Virginia Club? Sure. Didn't Jerry tell you? No, he didn't. No, that's one thing I forgot. You're a singer, Miss Warrener? Sure, I sing. Well, perhaps you'd sing for us now. Sure I would. You own a piano? Right there. Oh, thanks. Where do you put the nickel in? Uh, you know, when I was... <laughs> Say, wait a minute. Don't nobody leave this room. I lost my purse. <laughs> There's your purse, Miss Warrener, on the chair. Oh, boy, am I relieved. Jerry, kind of keep an eye out on my purse for me, will you? This woman is positively crude. Yeah, that's what I've been talking... Oh, she is, huh? She's crude, huh? Well, maybe it runs in the family. Mr. Warren... Why, Jerry, what a thing to say. Now, look, sis, we don't have to put on the dog around here. Just be yourself. We're among friends, ain't we? Jerry, what is this? Come on, sis, let's do that number for him like old times, eh? Do you sing, too? Sure, we used to be in vaudeville together ever since we were kids. Vaudeville? Well, we had to have food, Mr. Vance, and in vaudeville, they threw it at us. <laughs> you remember, sis, when Pop went to prison that time? Mr. Warner. Jerry! You mean the first time he went to prison, Jerry, huh? No, I mean the time he went to visit Mom. <laughs> <laughs> but it was no disgrace. She was innocent. I don't believe she ever stuck up that grocery store at all. Uh, of course she didn't. She was innocent. Sure, and so was Grandma. <laughs> Grandma? Yeah, but her record was against her, and they hung her for a spike. <laughs> Jerry, perhaps you'd better leave. Oh, not until we do our numbers. Swing it, Lucy. This'll kill you, folks. I swear to pray. I think I've heard enough, Barbara. And so have I. You may leave, Mr. Warner. Funny thing, they say that in every town we play. Oh, fine family they must come from. <laughs> to me? No. That's better. It's wonderful of you to drive me up to Aunt Patsy's cabin after all I've done. I... I'm afraid I caused you a little trouble, didn't I? A little trouble? Tell me, of the seven plagues, what number are you? <laughs> Jerry, I... I'm sorry, I... Oh, shut up. I'm delivering you over to your Aunt Patsy and then I'm leaving for good. I don't blame you, darling. I really don't. leave now, Jerry. I want to see you safely in the door where you can get out of my hair and into your aunt's. If she hasn't hung it up for the night. <laughs> Mrs. Warner. Hello, Ed. I, I wasn't expecting anybody tonight. Uh, well, will you tell Aunt Patsy I'm here? Why, she ain't here, Mrs. Warner. She ain't been here for weeks. Oh, I get it. Another one of your little tricks, eh? You thought you could get me up here on a cold night and ply me with a hot fireplace. <laughs> well, it won't work. I'm going back to town. I'm going alone. Good night and goodbye. Goodbye, Jerry. Be careful driving, dear. Hey. What's the matter? The keys to the car. Where are they? What? 
The keys to the car, the ignition key, where is it? I don't know. Did you have it when you came? How do you think I drove? You think I got galley slaves in the fan belt? <laughs> now listen, Lucy. You took that key and I want it back. I haven't got it. You have so got it. Oh, poor darling. I guess you're stuck here all night. Isn't it a shame? Oh, it's so nice sitting here. Just the way it was when we came here on our honeymoon. Sitting here in front of the fire. The fire's going out. You better throw on some more furniture. <laughs> it won't be long now. It's quarter past eleven. Forty-five minutes and you'll never have to listen to me again. Just, just forty-five teeny minutes. Funny, isn't it, Jerry? Well, it wasn't my fault. I only... I'll keep quiet. Forty-five little minutes. You'll be happy, I expect. All this that happened tonight will be forgotten. I'll, I'll tell Barbara Vance myself that it was all a joke. And that I want you to be very, very happy. Well, it's, it's only 30 minutes now, Jerry. Lucy, listen. I... What, Jerry? Nothing. Oh... And you must never think of me. Never let me spoil your happiness, Jerry. Uh, I'll get along all right. Just, just be happy, darling. I'll get along all right. No one will ever know that... Oh, but I shouldn't say these things, should I, Jerry? But I'll get along all right. Wait a minute. Listen. Yes? Listen, Lucy. What? Listen, it's all off. I'm not going to go through with it. I don't care whether you love me or not. You're married to me and you're going to stay married. Do you hear? Yes. Call the caretaker. No, I'll call him myself. Ed! Ed, come in here right away. Anything wrong, folks? Listen, you're a witness. See, the divorce is off. Huh? Oh, Jay. We're calling it off on account of darkness. But exactly 30 seconds before 12 o'clock, we call off the divorce. Can you remember that and swear to it? You betcha. And you're pleased? You betcha. All right, then, get out. You betcha. And stop ad living. <laughs> Jerry. Oh, Lucy. Oh, Jerry, listen. Twelve o'clock. Wedding bells, darling. And every second that passes, I love you twice as much. Say it, Jerry. I love you, Lucy. I love you, Jerry. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> curtain fall. Because all good things must come to an end. But returning now to the footlights are Constance Bennett, Ralph Bellamy, and Bob Clark Gable Hope. Hear that, Ralph? Bob Clark Gable Hope. Yes, I heard it. Good. Now i got to find somebody who believes it. <laughs> Why don't you tell Bob what you're looking for in a leading man, Mr. DeMille? Well, Bob, let me describe the one I want for Reap the Wild Wind. To begin with, he should be handsome. Well, women faint when they look at my profile. <laughs> I feel a little weak myself. <laughs> now, wait a minute. There's not another profile like it in Hollywood. Bob, are you trying to say you've got the best profile in Hollywood? No, but I've got the most profile. <laughs> <laughs> but above all, Bob, <laughs> a leading man's personality must be so strong that he'll be able to convince anybody he's telling the truth, no matter what he says. You don't want a leading man, C.B. You want a guy from the Los Angeles Weather Bureau. <laughs> You better get somebody else. I've got to play golf tomorrow morning anyway. Then I've got some good advice for you, Bob. When you get through playing golf and take your shower, don't forget to use Lux soap. It's really a wonderful soap. I've used Lux for years. Always have it in the house and, of course, in the studio, too. That's sound advice, Bob. You'll find Lux soap in the best homes in Hollywood and just about everywhere else. What's the show for next week, C.B.? Next week, Ralph, our play is Cheers for Miss Bishop. With the original stars of the picture, Martha Scott and William Gargan. Cheers for Miss Bishop is adapted from the Richard Rowland United Artists production. It's being cheered by audiences everywhere. You'll hear Martha Scott repeat her great screen performance as Ella Bishop, the schoolteacher. And Bill Gargan will play Sam Peters. It's a deeply moving love story. And will bring back heartwarming memories when we present these two stars 
in Cheers for Miss Bishop next Monday night. It was a swell picture, C.B. I really enjoyed it. I saw it one night when the Ghost Breakers wasn't playing anywhere. <laughs> but I know you'll have a great performance next week. Good night. Good night. Good night. To tell the truth, you are all collapsed. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Martha Scott and William Gargan in Cheers for Miss Bishop. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Bob Hope appeared tonight through the courtesy of the makers of Pepsi. He is soon to be seen on the screen in Paramount's Road to Zanzibar, co-starring with Bing Crosby and Dorothy Lamour. Ralph Bellamy's forthcoming picture is Warner Brothers, affectionately yours. Heard in tonight's play were B. Benedict as Aunt Patsy, Fred McKay as Armand, Vivian Janice as Barbara, Sally Payne as Dixie Bell Lee, Werner Felton as Mrs. Leeson, Gloria Gordon as Mrs. Vance, and Robert Strange as Mr. Vance. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Roy. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>